The last storage topic to discuss is going to be object storage. Object storage is a relatively new storage architecture that can store any data type and at any scale. In object storage, we do not follow a file system, or sometimes it is called a flat file system approach. You just have a big storage container and inside it, there are no directories or subdirectories. Just one big flat container that you write files directly to, and these files are now going to be called objects. Because of this unique file system, this allows us to really scale. There is virtually no limit to the maximum size of your storage container or a limit to the maximum number of objects that you can write to it. Every object has multiple components. The data itself, metadata which is a description of the data like the type and size, and lastly a unique key for the object to uniquely recognize it in these massive storage containers. Clients use HTTP protocol to read and write objects, but we do not call them read or write requests. Instead, we call the get and put requests. The main object storage service from AWS is Amazon S3, simple storage service. Your storage containers are called buckets. A bucket, when created, is tied to a region and can span multiple AZs within this region. S3 buckets offer unlimited capacities. And they offer 11 nines of data durability, a very, very high rate for data durability. S3 allows you to set granular controls and permissions on the bucket level and even on individual object level. When you put an object to an S3 bucket, you can choose from multiple storage classes that offer different retrieval performances at different pricing options for different use cases. So let's study these storage classes in more detail. The first storage class is the S3 standard. Compared to the rest of the other storage classes, S3 standard would be the most expensive one. It offers low latency and high throughput for data that is considered to be very hot. The data that is expected to be frequently accessed. When you upload an object to the standard storage class, that object will be replicated at least three times to three different AZs in the region where the bucket is created. This offers us 99.99% .99 data availability. The cost structure for the S3 standard is mainly the storage costs of your objects. The next storage class is the standard IA. IA is short for infrequent access. If my data is not very hot and is not expected to be frequently accessed, I can use the standard IA and save on storage costs while getting the same performance as the S3 standard. However, this should be only for infrequently accessed data. Besides the storage costs, which are cheaper than standard storage costs, there would be extra data retrieval charges. Objects are also replicated to three AZs and the offered availability is 99.9%. The third storage class is called OneZone IA. It has the same concept as the previous one in terms of cheaper storage costs plus retrieval costs for infrequently accessed data. But the main difference, objects are not replicated. Every object in the bucket has one single copy of it in one of the AZs of the region of that bucket. So the data availability is less, it is 99.5%. But the one zone is 20% cheaper than the standard IA. This is a perfect choice for secondary copies of data backups or data that you can regenerate. So if the data is hot, we should use the standard storage class, if it is not frequently accessed, we can use the standard IA. What about if I am not sure about my data, if it is going to be hot or not? If it is going to be frequently accessed or not? Or even if the access pattern for my data changes, it starts maybe as hot data, but eventually cools down and becomes less accessed over time, what if it becomes hot again? What would be the best storage class to use in this case? Can AWS help me with that? Definitely. We have got another storage class named S3 Intelligent Tiering. A storage class that will reduce your storage costs by automatically moving your data from one storage tier to another based on the access patterns, with no performance impact, 
no retrieval fees, or any added operational overhead. You just pay besides for the optimized storage costs an extra small monthly monitoring fee. The remaining storage classes are variations from this service known as S3 Glacier. This is a perfect and cost-efficient storage solution for very cold and frozen data, like backups and archives, data that you are not expecting to be retrieving a lot, hopefully not. So, for this type of data, you would like to minimize as much as you can your storage costs. Glacier offers three storage classes to choose from based on your scenario. Glacier Instant Retrieval is a low-cost storage class for archival data that might need to be retrieved immediately within milliseconds. Glacier Flexible Retrieval is cheaper than Glacier Instant Retrieval by nearly 10%. This would be ideal for your archives that don't need immediate access. The retrieval time needed can range from a couple of minutes to several hours. The last class to mention is the Glacier Deep Archive. This is the lowest cost storage class. Imagine you need to keep your backups for the last 10 years for the sake of compliance. You would like not to spend too much money on that. You do not expect to retrieve them anytime soon. You can use Glacier Deep Archive and maximize your savings, but when needed expect retrieval time to be within 12 hours. The final topic remaining to conclude this lesson is going to be about S3 lifecycle rules and policies. S3 lifecycle configuration allows you to define time-based policies either to transition your objects from a storage class to another cheaper storage class or even set expiration policies when to delete your objects. Look at this example. You upload a new object. It is expected to be frequently accessed so we use the standard storage class. We can set a rule that after 30 days when the object cools down a little move it to standard IA. Then after 6 months, it becomes rarely accessed, so we move it to the Glacier Instant Retrieval, just in case someone needs to retrieve it. Then maybe after 1 year, the odds of someone requesting access become less and less, so we move it to Glacier Deep Archive and keep it there for 5 years. Then after that, we automate the deletion of a such an old object. This is an excellent mechanism to automate the transitioning and deletion of your objects and control the costs.